Hello, and welcome to the Tower Coffee Hour. I'm your host, Ty Tyree, and tonight we're going to be talking about a visioning session that happened for Seabrook Square on November the 16th. Seabrook Square is a great new development that's happening just south of Miller across Manor Road. It's going to have some pretty exciting stuff in it, and we need to keep on top of it and see what's happening. So here's what's happened at the visioning session. Um, so I'm Nicole Jocelyn. I'm with Capital A Housing, part of the development team here. We've also got folks from um, NHP Foundation, our development partner. Um, we have our design team at Urban Foundry and Design Workshop, our, our landscape architects. Um, and they'll be facilitating the conversation over there. But I just thought from the development side, I would give a, just a brief update. I know a lot of y'all know the site, know what we've proposed. I'll get out of the way so you can actually see this. Um, so here's our agenda for today. Just a quick welcome and I'll do a quick overview and then we'll move over there um, and wrap up around 7, 7.30 depending on, on how much feedback you guys have built in for us this evening. Um, this is the same timeline we looked at in our last meeting just to recap. Um, it's a very high level timeline. Um, the only update was we have not made our development agreements finalized yet with the city, so that got changed from October to November. Um, so we're still in negotiations with the city, but we're moving forward with the design process. Um, we expect to be complete with the design process in May, have permits by the summer of 2023, and then start construction in the fall and about a two year construction timeline. Um, we had hosted a meet and greet um, and in, at the end of October, which is the development team hosted a meet and greet um, and, and at the end of October, which is the development team. We're here today for our first visioning workshop. We're uh, planning on having another one in January that's more focused on sort of community programming and what's going to happen in on the site once there are buildings there and community partners and how we're going to really activate that as a community space. And then we are continuing to have uh, conversations with integral care residents. They're the permanent supportive housing provider on site. Um, so we've been doing a lot of uh, individual focus group conversations with their residents and their architecture team. Um, we're, we plan on continuing to host community partner meet and greets. There are a lot of folks as part of this development, so we're gonna kind of slowly roll out opportunities to meet those folks. Um, and then we're always around and available and happy to attend any other neighborhood meeting or conversation that y'all have that we should be part of. Um, I just wanted to recap, these are the community priorities from the RFP that the city put out um, that we responded to. Um, and really highlighting those community priorities being uh, active ground floor uses and public meeting spaces um, in integration with the neighborhood both physically and culturally and then providing opportunities for environmental sustainability in the site design, the building design and how it operates. And the big thing that's not on here, affordable housing. This is a 100% affordable housing development. Um, we'll have uh, 263 units on site. Um, we added one. And we'll have 60 permanent supportive housing uh, units in addition to 203 income restricted units that range in uh, median family income that they're serving. And this is just, this is from our proposal that I just kind of wanted to leave it in this presentation just to note that we're really aware of um, our access, the, the site's really great access to um, transit and to green space and that greenway that we have along Pershing and really wanting to make sure that our, the way that we're designing this project really takes advantage of those assets and complements them. And then here, is the big new information on our new our, our updated site plan that's different from our proposal but still um, a pretty similar concept so we've got um, a greenwood building so this is greenwood pershing manor um, we've got affordable housing here here's permanent supportive housing and then this is 
um, all affordable housing here. Um, we wanted to focus the conversation tonight on what's happening in this public plaza area, we really see this as the sort of community treasure of this project, and wanting to make sure we're all the ground floor spaces that front this uh, plaza are really active and serving the neighborhood well. We've got live work units for artists in the blue, and then a cafe on the yellow, and then this community hall space in red, um, and the leasing office in this corner. So our conversation today, we really want to focus on what's happening in this open green space, and then how these uh, ground floor uses are engaging that. And what's happening on the interior as far as how this community hall is serving the neighborhood and how this cafe um, is engaging with that space as well. So that's a very high level overview of where we're at in the development, where we're sort of focusing the conversation tonight. Um, any big questions before we move into the other room? We've got a couple of boards that we have some really specific questions that we want to drill into with y'all about what you see as being um, really good uses for that plaza and how we want to sort of shape the, the building aesthetics. Yes? What was the major change in the layout from the initial proposal? I don't have any Nothing that anybody would notice except okay. for us. <laughs> um, this building changed shape a little bit. Um, we used to have a, a little uh, curve and a, it connected to this building in a different way. Um, and then this building also and our, our magical proposal had some curves that have been regulated for you know constructability. Yes. Where is integral care offices? Or is their the, so their building is this one. They will have all of their resident services and their staff offices within that building. They'll also have a resident services person in uh, this area also that that'll be serving the rest of the development. Okay. It's on. The parking lot is that structure parking? Yes. That, okay. So and then parking. is there always that break between the um, permanent supportive housing and the building to the this one, that break? There was always a, a separation here. Um, and these are these are internal uh, paseos. There's buildings the building covers over those, but these are um, kind of pass throughs of this building. Um, this mass used to be two separate buildings, um, and they, we joined them together to be able to get our unit count and add those multi-bedroom units in. Hey, no. Yes. Uh, well, since we're looks like we're going to be experiencing more snow collapses, and since our government, state government's not going to be handling uh, loss of electricity, water, etc., is that part of the discussion at all? Yeah. Resiliency. Yes, we've um, met with the resilience office last week or the week before. Last right? week. Um, and we've been talking about this, how we can design this community hall to also serve as a resilience hub, and what kinds of auxiliary power and water sources we would want to serve that space, and and also just sort of how it needs to operate as a distribution point and somewhere that folks could come for services. What I really took away from that conversation is. For this to be a place that people trust and will come to and know to come to for resources, it has to be part of the way folks engage in their neighborhood on a daily basis. It has to be a, a trusted place, a treasured place, somewhere that is just sort of on your like weekly or daily route in your the, your normal life, which is why I feel like this, it's really important that this plaza functions not only as an, an amenity for the residents, but also for the neighborhood at large. And that being a public space, a cafe being somewhere people are used to going to, there being activities that are open to the community at large in that community hall, like art classes and other kinds of opportunities to to really engage in this place and know it as a place that you're welcome. Well, there's a, like the, on the other end of the block, mm -hmm. uh, I think it's Franklin Grove. Garden. Franklin, Franklin Garden. Garden. During the Snowcopolis, they couldn't flush the toilets. Oh. And so we were melting snow so they could take buckets to flush the toilets. Mm -hmm. So stuff like that, basic stuff, mm -hmm. if the power goes out and you have multifamily mm -hmm. uh, 
density, it might be good to try to think about those kind of conditions. The residents, at, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've, we've had some discussions with them trying to figure out uh, a good way to do that. The water is the trickiest one. Yeah. Because water has to be, if you store water, it has to be tested almost on a weekly basis. So it's not. Yeah, I don't know what. Yeah. The, I know there's going to be problems, but I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. <coughs> yeah. Nowadays, when you design a multifamily structure, mm -hmm. those things are going to happen, yeah. and it's not really responsible if you sure. don't figure that out. Mm -hmm. And we have like Kensington as well, the affordable mm -hmm. housing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we, we've talked to them, and we've got some ideas on how to to kind of do a couple things, um, and we learned some things as well in that meeting, just about some of the opportunities that are out there that people don't know about which is the fire trucks bringing in water. Mm -hmm. But having some place to store it is the big question. Yeah. Uh, the other thing they talked about was they could bring electricity in as opposed to bringing us doing this electricity out. So we need to talk to our electricians. We found this out last week, so we're still doing some research yeah. Yeah, to figure out what that's going to take and what's the cost as well, because it's got to be Got to be making reasons. Yeah. Those are the things we're looking at now. So, someone on your team was said she had experience from. Mm -hmm. Yeah, who was Lauren and the other Yeah. Um, and she said that you guys wanted to make that a yeah. priority. Mm -hmm. and it I is. Think that mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I was just curious what kinds of conversations you might have had with Red Cross here. Um, just seeing us there kind of like this emergency sort of a hub. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we talked to them early on in the proposal process before um, we were awarded the site. Um, we haven't, other than coordinating with them to be able to use the community space, we haven't had additional conversations about what they're envisioning for redevelopment. We, we understood from our previous conversations that they're, they're plans are far in the future, um, but we, one of the follow-ups from our meeting with the resilience office was to, to meet with their contact and have conversations about how we can complement each other. Um, Y'all want to move into the other room to play with some sticky dots? The questions on this are they relate to the board questions? Oh, just this specifically, or is it all of them? All of them, but it just doesn't have the imagery. Who am I working on? That's cool. Yeah, I'm gonna just And I what the slacking needs. Yeah, I'm not here. Yeah, the green is what you love about it. I'm not here. Well, that's good to know. Um, it's a good that we It's good that we set up. 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 It's good that so, and um, did you get, I know, I'm pretty sure Liz shared, I think that's fine. You know, like the community, you know, because the benefits that the community had were not immediate. The community priorities, yeah. And yeah, exactly. Yeah, I know. It's like our, our yeah, it's the rating for the right. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, I know. I can't When we did John Gates Park, we just did AEGB. They were just stickers on this. 
history here. So See, I know, yeah. Just, just trying to get <laughs> what everybody said. So that's how it went at the visiting session. Uh, I hope you got something out of this and you'll follow along as we pay attention. There'll be one more visioning session sometime in December and we'll try to get there and let you see what happened at that as well. So this is Ty Tyree signing off for the Tower Coffee Hour and the Seabrook Square November visioning session. <laughs>